May we shape a space to meet you, O oh God, a space that plays with mystery, opens up justice, seeks peace, and binds us together as a community. May we make alive the journey of promise on the Lenten journey of promise, full of expectant hope that with the going will come good. May we travel through dust and ashes, bread and wine, water and hope to find you, the God who travels with us. Amen. God of mercy, we are at times a people easily given to despair. When we look into the future, we often see endings and not beginnings. We confess yes, that we have been entangled in the problems of this world and have trouble seeing hope for the future. We grow accustomed to sighing and in our, our cynicism, we evade your call to new life. Forgive us for our lack of faith and restore in us a trust in your power to create new beginnings where we are not able to imagine them. Amen. In Christ we are forgiven and made new. Let us place our trust in God's promise of new and abundant life. Thanks be to God. Called to be one in Christ Jesus, we are made to love one another in unity and grace. Peace be with you. Jerusalem if they would receive God's love and care. 
And just like we know sometimes it's better for our dogs and cats if they're groomed or have a bath, even if they might not want it at the time. So today's story that you're gonna hear is gonna be kind of a sad story. But even if some people in Jesus' time didn't accept Jesus' invitation to receive God's care, we can. As we follow Jesus and learn from him how to receive God's care and love, then we'll have more to share with others, just like Jesus did. Please pray this repeat after me, prayer with me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for Jesus, thank you for Jesus, who teaches us, who teaches us, how to receive your love and care. How to receive your love and care. So that we can then, so that we can then, share your love with others. Share your love with others. Thank you and amen. Thank you and amen. I'll see you next time. May the world hear, may we hear, the glory of the everywhere. Amen. The Old Testament scripture comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses 1 through 12 and 17 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Ab Abraham said, Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall be your descendants, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur, Ur to, of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O oh Lord God, how am I to know what I shall that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me the heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought them all, he brought him all of these and cut them into two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of the Arabes. So ends the reading. So I'm going to ask that you um, remain seated um, unless you would like to come up and uh, light one of the candles as part of our uh, Lent and spiritual practice. Um, so feel free to come forward as we sing uh, God is my strong salvation number 841. Um, so you just remain seated uh, while we're singing, but if you want to come up, uh, feel free to do so.
I got it. Scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Hear a word of the Lord for you today. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen. I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today and tomorrow and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. A word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this week, uh, I called a dear friend of mine, uh, Rob, who graduated last year uh, from Princeton Seminary. We started at Princeton back together in 2018, um, and he graduated, waited with his uh, MDiv, and I'm finishing up an additional Master's of Arts. 
can I just talk through some of the ups and downs of our life at Princeton Seminary? And he's been one of my closest friends throughout this journey. We reminisced about our life there, enjoying really crummy food in the dining, dining hall, um, <laughs> but recognizing it was the conversation that mattered. We thought back to all of those who sat at our table and the awkward and even heated uh, discussions uh, that happened, everything from grading scales to certain theologies about justification, justification by grace alone, sanctification, eschatology, um, and more of these theologically confusing words. Um, and you know, I like to use them a lot, but I don't actually always know what they mean. Um, but, you know. <laughs> Yes, I sometimes actually don't get a beat. But then we also talked about how this pandemic just like stopped us in our track. It wiped us out, especially while in seminary. I know he lost his job and had utilized the New Jersey VA healthcare and the financial assistance programs that he never thought in a million years ago that he'd have to do. I know Melanie couldn't find a job and we started to worry about how we'd pay for rent the necessary repairs on our car and more. But the thing is, is Rob and I were talking on Friday, we, we just can't believe it's been two years. We've been friends longer in a pandemic than outside of one. And the reality is that Melanie and I have been married longer in a pandemic than outside of one. So the thing that Rob and I talked about most was um, that the fact at the beginning of the pandemic, all we could do was desire what we had from the time before. If we only could have another meal together in the dining room, or if we could only get a beer after class, or have those weird conversations about theology. But, you know, also, you know, I think as, as I was um, reflecting this week, I also started my student pastorate here um, in September of 2019. And I can still remember the panic that Catherine and, I, Catherine and I felt when everything changed. So many questions raced through our heads, as, especially as we recognized that the season of Lent was going to be something that we never witnessed before in this modern understanding of something that we call church. I also remember being excited, rightfully or unrightfully so, that we got an extra week of spring break um, <laughs> while, while the seminary sorted things out. Um, and because of the busyness of that season in particular, um, I was told that I needed you know, to take two weeks off of even my ministry here at Grace based on the seminary's guidelines uh, for field education. You know, I do feel a little bit of guilt um, for being excited about the extra week. Um, but then came the news that we were going to be online for the rest of the semester. And it was a radical relief for us as Melanie and I went up to Rutgers University College Ave campus three to four days a week. Um, and as you all know, the traffic from on Route 1 between Princeton and New Brunswick can be really horrible. Um, some days only 30 minutes, another an hour and a half because of accidents and traffic and whatnot. You know, I bring my bags to one of the libraries um, at Rutgers after dropping Melanie off for classes and finding a commuter spot, potentially even a mile away because of how Rutgers worked. So at the beginning of this pandemic really gave me such a sigh of relief. And then the seminary moved all of our classes online as pass-fail instead of uh, letter grade. So my Greek and ethics, preaching, and practical theology classes move to pass fail. Another relief. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I probably should have written more about that, but um, yeah, Greek was really difficult during the pandemic. Um, but we also recognized during that time that there was so many acts of real human kindness that we witnessed during these early stages of the pandemic. But I think now, as we look back, most of us can only see a journey where the beginning is not very clear, but incredibly traumatic events are brought to the forefront. Whether it's the frustration that many of us have felt over the last two years, feeling like we're locked outside the gates of hospitals, banging on the door to get inside, but told no visitors allowed, or only one visitor allowed, or 
visiting hours are only from 10 to 5. Come back tomorrow. And the times of loss, whether it's a loss of a family member or a friend. And the times of grief, where we cannot see our family or friends because of um, policies or bad weather or whatever it may be. We can't give people hugs or even shake their hands. It's so customary in our daily practice. We lost the ability to gather as a community for significant amounts of time. Or even here, where a phrase who struggled with the numbers on Sunday seemed dramatically less than before the pandemic. But as I was looking, it's 104 weeks ago this Sunday that we had to shut our doors for the first time. But I think all these pandemic-related related realities connect to our scripture reading today. In the first six verses of Genesis 15, we almost have this kind of Lion King-esque uh, conversation between Abram and the Lord, where the Lord, in a vision, um, brings Abram outside and says, look towards the heavens and count the stars. If you're able to count them, so shall your descendants be. But we started out with this promise that we know from God. God is our shield. Then Abram moaning and groaning about losing his house, not having any children, even arguing with God. Then God provides this promise, um, counting the stars and the descendants shall be. But with all of this, God's covenant with us is ever so strong. And then once we transition to Genesis 15, 7, the Lord reminds Moses how God already fulfilled the promises of old. Then the Lord provides Abram with a new covenant in verses 17 to 18. You know, I think the last time I really looked at this passage was um, December of 2018, the end of my <laughs> Old Testament class in preparation for my final Rob and I wanted to pull our hair out for all the things that they needed us to memorize. But I think it just speaks so much um, to us today, especially looking at times of old. But we're still in this continuous season of transition where the news about the pandemic and cases and whatnot are down now, but we still face this instability where the war in Ukraine is placing the vulnerable and killing many the rising prices of everything, from food to clothing, vehicles to the gas we put in them, services and more continue to rise. Where, still today, 104 Sundays later, COVID-19 still breaks apart families every day and continues to push people to breaking points, even when the world seems to move on. So this week, as we remember the two years of loss, of shutdowns, unemployment, mask mandates. We also mourn the loss of so many. The reality of 50, 500 million cases of COVID worldwide, 80 million cases of COVID domestically, more than 6 million global deaths, and almost 100 million Americans who've died just from this virus. But we also hold the promise of God through Jesus Christ that we are called to live in the covenant of the one who loves us. We are called to embrace the trust in God that we will make it through this time and knowing that Christ is by our side. We trust that God is with our pastoral nominating committee as the Spirit moves in them and the next pastor of Grace Presbyterian Church who will lead this community through a new chapter. We trust, like Abram, that God entrusts us with every new covenant. That we don't always need to look back and yearn for what was, but more look forward to see what God will do with us. And as we listen to the psalmist, um, as we conclude our time, Psalm 27 speaks to this time of uncertainty and yearning for something that once was. 
but knowing that God has something even bigger planned for us. God's new covenant in the world. And we hear this through these words. Don't give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witness has risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Friends, God's promise of new life is here. We need to allow our heart to take courage and wait for the Lord. Amen. Friends, let us stand if you're able in body or in spirit. As we sing, Lead Me and Guide Me, number 740 in our hymn.
Yeah, so we um, lift Judy Ann up and uh, ask that God uh, allow some healing uh, to happen and relieve of pain and um, discomfort, uh, and especially for all those uh, in Judy Ann's life as well as they uh, provide care for her. Lord, in your mercy. Good morning, Lynn Petrowski. I'd like prayers of hope for uh, Lori, who's going to visit Trevin to see her daughter this week, so she travel plans, and also prayers of help for my neighbor Sonia, who's going to have surgery on Tuesday. Um, so we lift up uh, his neighbor, uh, Sonia, who's having uh, surgery on Tuesday, and um, ask that God uh, be with all those who are um, providing care, um, and then also for Lori, who's traveling uh, to see her daughter uh, for uh, travel mercies, and in Thanksgiving that she can go on travel. Lord, in your mercy and in Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 My name is Amy Miller, and um, there's three families, so I like to uh, pray for the Ford family for my dear friend Frank that had lost his mother. Uh, I'd like to pray for my Aunt Janice and her family, the Rose family, for losing my Uncle Hank at 94. And I'd like to pray for my dear friend Tina and the Barrero family that lost their uh, father at 94. So wow. I'll end with me. Thank you. Yeah. So we lift up uh, all three families mentioned. And, uh, Ask that God's uh, comfort be made known to them uh, during uh, the next times of loss. Lord, in your mercy. Um, hi, Tammy. Uh, I just have a request for some prayers for myself, for Dr. Wisdom, and some healing for some ongoing health issues, and also prayers of celebration for Rob's birthday and another trip around the sun. But it's okay. <laughs> birthday and uh, celebrate uh, another trip around the sun um, and also go back to him we lift you up uh, particularly during this time and all of those who are providing care for you. Lord in your mercy and in thanksgiving. Debbie. Oh that was good. <laughs> uh, Debbie, I have three prayer requests. One for myself because I fell the other day. One for Corey because he has a sinus infection. And one person that just had a new baby boy. Okay. Uh, so, Debbie, we lift up uh, all the uh, Mason. Mason. Okay. Um, so, we lift up uh, all the prayers that, that, you, uh, that you mentioned for yourself and for friends. And then also for uh, the joy of uh, a new birth uh, of, of Mason. Lord, in your mercy and in thanksgiving. Thank Daddy Pacquiao, um, there's a um, George and Thomas who Judy has a pacemaker um, that's made a big difference, but he's also having a problem with sustaining medication. Um, the medication that he's on uh, is um, dropping his blood pressure too low, and um, we have to get the medication adjusted properly because yesterday it was much too low. So we lift up uh, Jim, who is, um, has his pacemaker, um, so we give uh, thanks for that, but also um, ask for um, wisdom for those who are um, trying to find a balance um, in his medication um, in particular. And um, God, we also lift you up as you continue to provide care uh, for him as well. Lord, in your mercy and in thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We live in the wonderful reality of God's promise. We live in the joyous hope of God's new day. Let us give thanks to God as we share our gifts and make an offering. Thank you to all of those whose gifts and offerings have sustained the church during these difficult times. Plates are available in the sanctuary to receive your offering. You can also give online by visiting the church website. Thank you.
journeyed with today. These we have prayed for today. These we have met today. A, com a unique combination and community. May the love we have tangled with today, the grace we have woven, and the peace we have shared reflect the belong in the reign of God. Receive all we have touched today, all we have given, and all we have known as our giving to your realm. These are our offerings to you forever. Amen. Feel free to stand uh, if you're able um, to sing. Somebody's not being your work. Number 728.